Ed describes this tool so well because he's very excited about it. So I'm going to let him talk about it. Um, but there are different parts to this that you should know uh, terminology-wise. All right. You have your Bram. The guy that invented this or designed it is Bram Frank, and that's named after him, the Bram. You have horns, upper horns, low horns. Um, this is your seatbelt cutter and glass breaker. Um, what else is there? You got your lock. Uh, these are designed so you can switch grips. It's a lot easier with the knife because that doesn't have that, but it's there. The spoon, same thing, with your finger, so you can spin it. Um, it, has, it is jimped, so this is for grabbing and hurting fingers. We'll talk about that later. Um, and that's really it. Bramp, upper horn, lower horn, that's really all you need to know as far as the parts when we talk about it today. Um, but the excited one here will tell you <laughs> all about it. <laughs> okay, so um, so I am excited about this, and I'm glad that uh, Tom actually exposed me to this. So crimped. Close range, medium impact tool. Uh, not it's not a weapon. Okay, so I just I'm going to steal a quote from somebody else. Criminals use weapons. Good guys use tools. So if you're a cop, you got your utility belt, the gun and the mace and the taser and the big flashlight. Those are your tools. If you're a guy breaking into a house, those are weapons. Okay. It's also controlled response, and that's, that's what really got me excited about it. This is a scalable response. You don't have to beat somebody to death to defend yourself. All right, so let me explain. Medium impact. My hands are what's considered low impact. Not because they don't hurt, but it's just flesh on flesh. His hands hurt. Okay. <laughs> if I'm using um, a nightstick, or P P38, or a big mag light, or baseball bat. That's high impact, all right? And then, you know, guns and knives are lethal, lethal force. This is medium impact. So it's not flesh on flesh, right? But it's not designed to really destroy the body, like a bat would be. Um, so it allows you to respond enough take control of the situation. Um, the bramp, this section here, okay, um, can be used to hammer. We're going to go over that in a few minutes, okay? So I haven't even opened it yet, okay? It is a rescue tool, right? And it's a rescue tool because this section here will break glass, and this section here will break glass. So you come up on a car accident, someone's in trouble, you need to rescue them. You can get in, you can break the window, okay? The bottom part here is, uh, is a cutter. It will cut seatbelts. It will cut clothing. We're, we're working out today and somebody doesn't feel good, they fall down and have a heart attack, I can take this cutter, split the shirt open, get the paddles on them, or do CPR to save their lives. Um, it is not a live blade cannot cut you. So that means it's a non-lethal tool. It's not lethal force. It's jimped all the way around. So that's what that, that grooving that you see is called jimping. All right? So what's, imp what's important about it is if I'm in a situation like, again, you're a security guard, you're a bouncer, you're a police officer, and you need to get somebody to move, this will grip clothing 
but it will not rip flesh. So if I want Tom to turn, I can just turn him. Because I'm just catching the clothing and forcing the body to turn. Right? So it's a it's an abrasive edge. Right? But it won't cut. In the flow of using it, if something's going on, right, I can open it on impact. This one's kind of stiff, but it's new. I'll do it on myself. Right? But just as importantly, if I don't need it open anymore, the lock is on top, which means it's under my control. So with a lot of knives, the lock is on the bottom. It does happen, not often, but it has happened. It's happened to me a few times where I've been working with a knife and I brushed up against that lock and the blade folded down on my finger. I've cut this finger a few times. All of Bram's tools are designed with this notch in the bottom, right? So his knives have it too, so that if the knife were to fold, you wouldn't get cut. So with the lock on top, as I'm using it, if I don't need it extended anymore, I just be cock it and it'll close. And I don't have to and I can close it with one hand. The shape of it is designed ergonomically, so as we were talking earlier, the human hand hasn't changed in almost six million years. Right? We have an opposable thumb, we've had an opposable thumb for six million years. Okay. So it's designed to fit in your hand naturally. Um, because uh, Bram Frank is also very heavily involved with law enforcement training. It's in the same ergonomic position as a firearm. Right, which is another reason why this lock is on top, because that's also how you decock a semi-automatic weapon. Okay. The beauty of this ergonomic design is that it won't fall out of my hand. If it's a reverse grip, right, so uh, especially those of us who train with, you know, some, some knife training, and we do reverse grip, a lot of guys will cap the knife so that, it, so that on impact it won't bounce out of their hand. This is ergonomically designed, it won't come out of my hand. The spoon clip on the side, that's another one of Brent's patents, okay, so aside from being the way you would clip it, into your pants. The spoon is another grip surface. So it helps keep it secure. It's also, along with these, I don't I don't remember what these are called. I won't break that on that. Um, but Graham calls them the, the original fidget spinners. Um, but in conjunction with the spoon clip, I've got a grip surface. So I can change my grip mid-use if I need to. The upper and lower, the upper area has what they call the front and rear horns. That's jimped all the way around. This is going to allow me to grip. I'm going to be able to grip. Creates leverage. Even in, if I have a reverse grip, I can still grip because it's jimped all the way around. So I'm excited about this because it's not a knife. So if you live in a place where I do, where you can't really carry a knife without getting stopped and questioned every other day, this is not a knife, it's a tool. And the tool is going to allow me to do things like help other people, right? So um, if you have to break a windshield, it'll break a windshield. If it's the old style windshield with the laminate, the cutter will cut the laminate. I grew up in the Bronx, all the all of the apartment buildings on the first floor had that um, that uh, frosted glass with the wire reinforcing it. This will cut the wire. So if there's a fire and there's a woman screaming for help, and you need to break into the basement window, and it's, you can cut through that wire and get them out. So it's a rescue tool, but it's also a medium impact, close range, defensive tool. 
accessory to help you to defend yourself. And as someone who's been training in martial arts most of my life, I'm not, I'm very cynical about all the latest and greatest inventions. If you go on the web and see 10,000 know, new self-defense tools, this is the first one that's really got my attention probably in 25 years. So, if Tom lets me, I will just keep talking about it for the rest of the seminar. Because I'm very excited about it, and I hope that by the time we're done showing it to you, you'll see why, and, and you'll, you'll understand why this is such a unique addition. Not only to self-defense, but just for civil living. You can help other people with this. And I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. There's um, a reason why it's clipped this way. Most knives have to clip the other way. When you pull it out of your pocket, it's ready to go, okay? There are other knives, like this one, which I got excited about when I first saw it. When you pull it out of your pocket, it's deployed, which means I'm ready to go to work, besides the locking on the wrong side. The cravat? This is a... Uh, can I get it closer? Um, it's like a crown, yeah. So this comes out, you're ready to go. Plus being point up, I've had this happen. I don't carry this knife anymore. I put my hand in my pocket and I've stabbed myself. This is point down. So all his knives, I have one, uh, in your pocket is point down, so you don't, you'll never have that problem of it opening up by accident in there. Like this was designed, when I first saw it, guy's coming at and I'm coming in, boom, 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 and I pull it if I needed to in the flow and I cut him, right? But to get out of my pocket, it's gonna already open up. This, if this was the knife and I'm hitting him, pop, 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 and I need to open it, it opens right away, okay? But I wouldn't use this a, a knife on someone, right? This, I will carry. I carry this everywhere. Come and open, boom. Now I have control with just this, okay? If I need it closed, I close it, all right? It's a lot safer. Like, I, if you carry one of his knives, it's this without the safety tool. You could use yeah. it without ever opening it. This opens automatically when you come out of your pocket. So the design on this is awesome. Yeah. And you can switch it if you're a lefty. Whoever's a lefty could switch, the, <clears throat> yeah. switch it over to there. Yeah. So just to give a demo on it with the whole takedown and everything, so if he punches, right, and I come over just do what we just did here, boom, I hit. Now if I go for my arm bar, my elbow lock, I take him to the floor, boom, I have this pin. I have this pin, right? I have control there. We added stuff in the back. I can push it into his into the well, into the neck. This will help keep him down. If it's open. I have a pin, I have a pin, I have a pin, okay? If I want to roll him over, I can use this to grab him. See how he's about to turn? Nah, he can't because his arm is there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but if I needed to, if I want to bring this hand up, give me this hand, I have that. So if something that I need to close it, I'm back to there. Okay? So it all works together. Okay, it's not just, oh, you pin the guy, you take the guy, you get down, you do nothing. This works on the ground.
one of, one of the things you just reminded me is, so Tom's a, a cop responding to a bad situation, he gets me on the ground, right? And, you know, maybe we're in a part of town where uh, everybody's carrying a knife. Maybe uh, he's making a drug bust and he doesn't want to stick his hands in my pockets because I might have needles. He can open that up. And he can do either a crunch check from the outside, or he can, I don't, I'm not wearing pants with pockets, but he can take that weaver and open my pocket and pull it inside out. I don't know if it'll work on this. And empty my pockets without I having to stick his hands inside. Right? So if you're a security guard or a police officer, um, if you're in a situation Maybe it's a home invasion. Maybe you go home tonight and somebody's sitting in your living room eating your potato chips. Dead man. Exactly, right? <laughs> the potato chips, man. But you get him to this position, you know, maybe you need to search him. Is he, going to, is he carrying a weapon? Is my family in danger? Tell your wife or your husband, call the cops. But now what do you do? What if the guy's got a knife on him? You're in trouble. You need to know. You can find out. So it has a lot of, of practical uses beyond pinching and poking. Okay? And that's what made me become a believer in it, was that it, it opened up a whole lot of opportunities for you to use it, depending on who you are and what the circumstances. So, um, so that's a very, very fundamental introduction to the crimp tool. Um, we've only really shown you the first couple of exercises with it, uh, but they all build on each other. So once you get comfortable handling it, each exercise builds on the one before, and you'd be surprised how fast you can become adaptive.